Well, hi there. Welcome back. And let's get right to it. Um, I want to begin to discuss a little bit here on um, the actual effects of what happens to people when you scare them and they're actually basically ignorant and they're just following the news source or the information that's come to them. In other words, uh, we're beginning to see the effects of what a real pandemic, a hoax of a pandemic that scared the public beyond comprehension. And um, one of the things you would expect to see is suicide rates are actually soaring at an alarming rate. So permit me to read off a few notes that I've uh, scribbled down over the past little while. And even though it was uh, from the uh, third week of June when I, uh, when I put together this information, over the last few weeks you haven't seen much of uh, us because I've had to you know, prepare some things again for uh, my family and our well-being to what we feel best survive the upcoming uh, next little while. Anyway, getting to this, permit me to read some notes that I put together here. We're beginning to see the effects of a hoax pandemic. I want to travel back in time and begin this post on December 15, 2019. That's the day the virus was first announced from Wuhan. The World Health Organization declared the outbreak a public health concern on January 30th, and from there, a pandemic on March 11th, 2020. That's actually pretty quick for any kind of disease to spread, but let's just leave all that aside for now. When I pulled the information, it was uh, back on June 28th, 2020, and there's been at that time there was a total of 194 days since the first announcement from Wuhan. Since that time, there's been a worldwide death toll of 503,140. Again, that's uh, not the date you're watching this. That is of June 28th, so it's very recent. Okay, divide that by the number of days, and you have an average of 2,594 supposed deaths per day due to this virus. The key word, though, keep in the back of your mind before moving on is supposed. The first noteworthy point to make is this. Anyone who's done the least bit of research through alternative media already knows, and by hardcore type 1 data, once again, that's tangible data, how massively the stats have been fudged to even reach the mild percentages it's currently lying at. The percentages being received from the current pandemic is no worse than a strong flu season mirroring that of 2018. By all accounts, this virus pales in comparison when compared to any of the great plagues humanity has faced throughout its history and survived. Our elected officials shuttered the planet for over three and a half months, transferring billions into financial ruin. Remember, the name of our site is Something Feels Wrong. And we named it that so because often that's exactly how the informed person feels. It's the few of us out there who are informed that are not being hoodwinked by the ideas with no science behind them. Scare tactics like the seriousness of the pandemic or the benefit of wearing an ear loop face mask it's the informed person who's doing their own investigating that recognizes these hoaxes for what they actually are, hoaxes. The mass majority fail to understand this simple but crucial to understand fact that fear shuts off rational thinking. Any person whose mind is controlled by fear will stay stuck in what is known as base consciousness. Higher thought is shut down. The fight or flight mentality sets into place and takes preference. Often, poor decisions are what follow. 
Fast forwarding to the present, now billions are beginning to realize what's meant by the cure being more deadly than the disease. Having studied similar encounters throughout history, apparently what so often follows financial devastation and fear is suicide. Yes, it's a sad statement, but nevertheless a true one, and I never did say truth was easy. When widespread chaos breaks out, each and every one of us has a different comfort zone. Some panic at the slightest things, while others aren't startled too easily. Remember, chaos, the fear of chaos, is one of the four primordial fears that we come into existence with. I keep bringing this up for a reason. Those who do not research and solely rely on mainstream media for their news are so often the first ones shuddering in fear. It has nothing to do with their education or with their wealth status. Once fear is in the brain, subconsciously it shuts off rational thinking. Remember, this is subconscious. You're not even aware of it. You need to catch on to it before you're in that state or when you're not currently in that state. All that replaces is fear and panic. So just so we're clear, I want my readers and subscribers to understand we're already way past that point of ignorance leading to fear, and fear so often leads to loss of hope. When the mind's already in a weakened state from fear and that person is not able to see anything worthwhile in their future, that frequency uh, that frequently excuse me that frequently leads us to what's presently unveiling in several parts of the world and that's a soaring suicide rate all over the planet the suicide rates are soaring at a rate not seen in many decades this alarming increase in suicides holds true in both the private sector and within the militaries so while most of the uninformed are hiding in their homes and wearing their face diapers Here's some facts to bring up the next time someone thinks that it's you who's the fool for expressing your researched hypothesis when comparing to their mainstream media understanding of what the current happenings are. First of all, let's talk a bit about suicide. We are averaging somewhere around 800,000 suicides per year. Doing the same method, dividing this by the number of days in a year, we're averaging 2,191 suicides per day. In the U.S., military alone, and since 1975, the average per day of both active and inactive who commits suicide is 24. I honestly had to double check this myself. Uh, I was floored to find that out and to find out in the next paragraph, suicide is currently the number one cause of death in the U.S. military in spite of its endless appetite of war for all around the world. What has come to play now, suicide is the number one cause of death in the U.S. military. It, it, do your own research. I'm not here to, to tell you to, that's exact. I'm, I'm trying to get you to do your own research. You'll come up with this. Nobody seems to care, though, that much about that statistic that we've all heard someone say in a crowded room, thank you for your service, and expect everyone to look at them like, cheering and oh thank you yeah for respecting it you're such a good person okay we've all heard that though right but we don't hear the other side of it that's all a lot of today is is lip service let's discuss another one that doesn't get all that much attention because of this massive pandemic that's killing everybody heart disease annually there are approximately 17.9 million deaths per eighty percent of those come from heart attack and the balance from stroke 
On average, there's over 49,000 people who die from heart disease daily. While there's so many more topics I could choose from, just another one off the top of my head was, again, doing your research, you'll find out the 2018 uh, H1N1 flu flu season runs parallel to this one in terms of every statistic you want to throw at it. So, you know, so much for this massive pandemic. And remember, pandemic describes geography, okay? You could lose electricity an entire, let's say, city of Los Angeles. Los Angeles would be suffering from a pandemic of a loss of electricity. So don't confuse it with epidemic, which is describing disease and severity. Pandemic only describes geography. So yes, this virus is a pandemic. Is it an epidemic? Hardly not. I want to leave my last one before cutting off um, for a moment because I think, uh, to me, it was the most touching, and that's why I left it for last, okay? But again, there's dozens more, but I want to keep the video to within 20 minutes. Starvation. I know many wouldn't be thinking of that one, but annually there are slightly over 9.1 million people who die because of starvation. That would make it an average of 25,000 people per day, 365 days a year, who currently dies on account of starving our modern day society. Can you believe it? Starvation, one of the slowest and most painful ways one can come to being extinct, and hardly a word of media coverage. Take notice of the obesity issues that run in most nations right now, and then relate that to the frequency level of thought that can allow that to happen. Now you have a better understanding of why we are where we are now. The frequency level of humanity has dropped and is hovering at some of its lowest vibrations in decades, and we are beginning to see the results of it. So the next time some self-righteous, ignorant fool tries to help the world by asking you to put on your face diaper, you might want to point out these sad but true facts to him. Then step back. Just watch their expression. It's remarkably similar to the expression on a dog's face when you're trying to show it a card trick. Again, when the mind is trapped in fear, it consciously shut down. People need to understand this. And after the shock wears out and they get insulted and we live in a society that people think once they've been insulted means they're automatically correct in their view, it's at that point where I suggest you best be ready to at least defend yourself if need be, okay? That's what kind of world we live in, but you're not going to stick up for what you know is right and bow into the rest in their fear not really heading down the right path, and it's a slippery slope. I'll continue on. Uh, there's going to be three links here. Uh, how does the coronavirus pandemic affect suicide? An excellent one from Martin Armstrong. Uh, world banking crisis, suicide over European banking crisis, and some of the photos that were sent in uh, from that were just absolutely sad. It was absolutely sad. And for now, it's Barry. We're going to continue on. I'm going to probably dig up something from 35 years ago uh, to replay it, even though, like I say, nothing changes but the technology. If there's any one piece of information before it goes dormant that I'd put on a memory stick uh, for my children and grandchildren, it just might be that one. It comes back from... 1984. And then you guys 
sit back, watch it a couple of times, and tell us if it's not exactly what's playing out right now. Anyway, it's Barry and DR, and uh, as always, pleasure being with you. We'll talk soon. Bye.